Let's talk about the San Diego Gulls 2021 to 2022 season. Hi, I'm Gio. I'm a professional sportscaster and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things Pacific hockey. The San Diego Gulls 2021 to 2022 season recently ended after being eliminated from the first round of the Calder Cup playoffs by their Southern Californian rivals, the Ontario Reign. This season was the worst regular season performance for the Gulls since the 2017 to 2018 season where they failed to qualify for the Calder Cup playoffs at all. They came seventh in the Pacific Division only just clinching a spot in playoffs, a feat which in the end relied a lot more on the Tucson Roadrunners losing to the Colorado Eagles than it did on their own performance. However, this season was kind of a fresh start for the girls. It was the season where they brought in the highest number of rookies since the 2015-16 season, tied with the 2018-19 season where they brought 15. They also brought in new head coach Joel Bouchard, who had previously been with the Laval Rocket, where in the 2020-2021 season, his record had gone 23-9-3, and then for the last three seasons overall, it was 83, 67, 24. So there was a lot of promise and a lot of hope for the girls coming into this fresh season. And I think under these circumstances, you would expect there to be a few growing pains at the beginning of the season. And for the San Diego Gulls, it definitely felt that way. The Gulls kicked off the season with three losses, two of which were to the team who would eventually eliminate them in the playoffs. They did end up having a five game win streak quite early on, but four of those five wins were against the same team, the San Jose Barracudas. And after that, they once again just failed to put together many wins. However, after this point, things started to improve. And whether it was just that they needed to get them themselves together, fashion an identity for this team and get the rookies settled, they actually managed to start putting some wins on the board. And as the improvements for the team came in, so did the improvements for the statistics of their players, especially their star rookie Alex Limoges, and things just started to look so much better. But then at the end of the regular season, that just all came crashing down once again. 10 out of their last 11 games were losses, and ultimately their qualification for playoffs came down to two Suns 5-6 loss to Colorado. Looking at the statistics over the course of the season, there were definitely some points that the goals were doing exceptionally well in. Limoges, the aforementioned star rookie, accrued the highest number of points and highest number of goals for the team at 40 and 23 respectively. He also got the highest number of power play goals at 12, which came in joint eighth in the entire league and number one for all of the rookies in the entire league. He also topped the team's game winning goals at four. He had the third highest shot percentage on the team at 23% behind Dostal and Carrick, who both got 100%, but also both only scored one goal each over the course of the season. And he also scored his first ever career hat trick in March, earning him the AHL player of the week. And we can also look over at a player like Nicholas Bruyard, who got just one point fewer than Limoges over the course of the season. He was the highest scoring and highest assisting defenseman on the team and actually was in joint first for the highest scoring defenseman in the entire league. However, we also failed to see any rookie get a shorthanded assist with Limoges being the only rookie to score a shorthanded goal over the course of the entire season. There were also no overtime goals scored. In fact, the only non-regulation win that the team got was on the 6th of November against Bakersfield where Perot scored a penalty goal. The San Diego goals only ended up playing two playoffs games as they were eliminated after that first round of the bracket. However, Limoges and Bruyard both maintained their top spots in the team with two points each. Hunter Drew was one of the four players who was recalled from the Anaheim Ducks to join the goals in the playoffs and he also got two points. He actually only ended up playing two games overall in the season with the Ducks and understandably didn't score any points in those games. Watching back on the goals playoff games, you can see that the Ontario Reigns playstyle was a lot more constricting and aggressive than the goals were. Was. As reported by the San Diego Union Tribune, Danny O'Regan actually said towards the end of the regular season that he would like to see the team play more aggressively, and you can kind of see where there's still room for that in the goals play style. We did see a shorthanded goal in game two, which was particularly impressive given how Danny O'Regan got run off the puck and the fact that the Ontario Reign have proven themselves to be exceptionally powerful in a power play situation. But ultimately, the goals just didn't pull through this season, and actually, this is the worst Calder Cups playoff performance of the team as every other playoffs that they've played in since 2015 has actually seen them make it at least to the second round. It's actually since been announced that the Gulls are going to be letting go of head coach Joel Bouchard as well as his two assistants Max Tolbert and Daniel Jacob and this is actually pretty big news because I think to let go of a head coach and the assistant coaches just one year after that head coach has been on the team is quite a big and, and sometimes risky decision to make. In all of my experience in esports I've learned that in situations like this it can oftentimes be an indicator of interpersonal or internal conflicts rather than necessarily the coach just being bad.
bad. And that doesn't necessarily mean anyone did anything wrong per se, but it might just mean that the personalities on the team didn't mesh with the coach. You have to have coaching staff that really work and synergize with your team. And given Joel Bouchard's really impressive resume that he had before coming onto this team, it's unlikely that he's just going to be left in the lurch without a job, uh, but this just might not be the team for him. General manager Pat Verbeek said that it was an extremely difficult decision, but that ultimately they just needed a clean slate in San Diego. It seemed like the start of this season was going to be a clean slate, but I guess now it's time for a clean, clean slate. <laughs> so that was my review of the San Diego Gulls 2021 to 2022 season. It sounds like there's a lot of things that could be improved going into the next season, but also that they are making changes that they think are going to be conducive to acquiring that improvement. I think with so many talented rookies on the team right now going into their second year of being with the team is going to be exceptionally promising they won't necessarily need that warm-up time that they perhaps needed in this season and you're going to have a lot more experience on their side combined with their skill that's going to really work for the team i think it's been a bit of a disappointing season for both the anaheim ducks and the san diego girls so a lot of work is going to have to be done in this upcoming season to kind of change their fate a little bit but i'm excited to see how they do that let me know your thoughts on the san diego girls down below and and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.